Hi, Michael Bettine here. And today I want to talk about a topic I'm sure most of us really don't think about. And that is relationships. Now, there are various types of relationships. And I'm going to cover nine or more of them that I see in this work we do of sound therapy, sound healing, whatever you prefer to call it. So let's jump right in. The first relationship would be the artist to the audience. And I will call the people who come to our sessions the audience. You can choose to substitute whatever term you want, but as a performing musician for many, many years, that's how I've come to think of the people who come to see me, no matter what sort of thing I'm doing, a concert, a meditation session, or any sort of musical performance, as the audience. Artist to audience. That's probably the most important relationship we have. Because we have to connect with them. We have to connect with the people out there. Just like me looking at the camera here, I'm trying to connect with you on your phone or your computer or however you are watching this video. I'm trying to connect. That's very important to make that direct connection. And especially in the, the sound work field, you really want to have a connection to the people. That's your number one relationship, as I see it. That connection directly from you to them. And it's important because you know, the people are coming for whatever reasons. Uh, some people just want to relax. Some people might have intentions. But you need to connect with them. So at its most basic, that's a two-way connection. Artist to audience. And if you're playing a concert, it's the same way. Think of any concert you've gone to of your favorite artist and how you felt a part of their show, their concert, and how they, up on the stage, connect to you out in the audience. Think of that. That's how you want to connect to the people who come to your sessions. That same sort of thing. Now, we're fortunate because in sound work, we don't generally play in stadiums or big outdoor sheds. We don't play to 20 to 50,000 people. I mean, we're not Bruce Springsteen or Pink Floyd or anything like that. We play to much more modest groups of people, often where we can, we can really see the people. They can see us at a very close you know, distance. So it's even much more personal that way. And in some cases you could actually reach out and you know, shake hands with people because they're that close. But you wanna think of that relationship. What is my relationship to the people who have come to see me? How can I relate to them? And how can I broaden that relationship? So I think that's the first one to consider. Now, just as important, but I'm sure most of us don't think about it, is artists to instrument. How do we relate to the instruments we're playing? Whether they're gongs, crystal or metal bowls, bells, shakers, rattles, didgeridoos, drums, whatever. How do we personally relate to the instruments? And speaking for myself, I have a very personal relationship with every one of my instruments. Each one is unique, so I have a unique personal relationship with each one, but I also have a relationship to them as a set, as a group. And that's important for me to be able to work with them. 
I've developed this relationship. I know the sounds they're capable of. I know how to get the sounds out of them. And there are times these instruments are mysterious. Sometimes they won't yield up certain sounds. And you try and you try. At, like playing with flumey. Sometimes I just can't get those notes. No matter how many times I've practiced that. Here in my studio, it's like I know how to get that note and pull that flumey and and they won't yield it at your performance. And it's just like they're temperamental. So it's developing a relationship. So especially when things like that happen, when you don't get the sounds you're expecting, that you could keep going, it doesn't throw you off, and you just move on to the next sound. Or sometimes my instruments open up and reveal totally new sounds. I've learned to go with that. It's like, oh, this is fun. Let's explore this sound. And you just kind of play around with it and see where it leads you. So it's having that personal relationship with your instruments. Now next, let's look at the audience having a relationship with your instruments, your sounds. Because they're the ones taking in the sound. They're pretty passive. They're just sitting there or lying there and the sounds are coming right at them. So thinking about the relationship of your instruments, your sounds with the people who are listening and feeling them. That's a big part of what we do with these instruments is, is the feeling side. It's taking in those vibes. It's, you know, if we think about it, the skin is, is the biggest organ of the body and it's the biggest sensory organ. And we can feel sound anywhere. Our head, our throat, our chest, our stomach, our hands, arms, legs, feet, our back, you know, we could feel the sound everywhere. So that's a big consideration. How are my instruments, my sounds connecting with the people out there? What is the relationship with that? Now another important thing is the feedback, audience to artist. What are you getting from the people out front? What are you sensing? You know, are, are they restless? Are they completely chill? Do you sense any sort of intentions, any sort of energies from them? You know, what is their relationship to you? Uh, sometimes you just get a really passive audience and it's just like, you know, they're all asleep, you know, and you're not really sensing any feedback from them. Other times the room is electric and there's energy abounding and you can really get this sense of people directing that energy towards you. So you need to pay attention to that and you need to pick up on what's happening or what's not happening. Really important thing is your instruments to you. What are you picking up off of your instruments? How are they reacting to you? What are they giving you today? Like I said, sometimes Try as you might, you cannot get certain sounds out of them. You move on, you try other sounds. You know, how are they relating to you? Sometimes, I, I don't know. All my instruments have personalities. And sometimes they are stubborn. And sometimes they are argumentative. And sometimes they are just very loving and giving. Sometimes they're just passive. Sometimes they're very active. That's how I relate to my instruments anyway. How do you relate to yours? 
you know, and how, because of that, how you relate to them, how do they relate to you? I think that's really important. And then we can look at a chain of relations. Artist to instruments to audience. Because after all, that's sort of the pathway. We take our intentions, play them into our instruments, and try to relay that to the audience out front. Whether you're playing in a rock band, a jazz band, a pop band, a symphony orchestra, or you're giving a sound session, it's the same thing. The instruments are sort of an intermediary between us and the audience. So we need to feel how that relationship is, us into our instruments, creating our sounds, and presenting those sounds out to the people. Think about it. Again, the example of going to a concert of your favorite artist. Maybe it's a guitarist. How do you relate to the artist on one level, just you to the artist, but also how do you relate to the artist through their guitar? How does that affect you? What they are directly saying through their guitar to you. Different levels of relationships. And I think it's important to think about all of these. And then there's that, the opposite, that feedback relationship. How does the audience out there relate to the sounds you're making, to the instruments you are playing, back to you? And that's different than you directly relating to your audience and, and sensing what they are giving back to you. This is giving back, how are they reacting to the sounds back to you. So it's a chain. Audience, instruments, sounds, artist. And the previous one was the other way. Artist, instruments, sounds, audience. So think about these relationships. At, you know, don't spend all your time while you're playing thinking about like, how am I relating? But Give it a thought. Give it a thought before you start your session. How am I going to relate to my audience? How am I going to relate through my sounds to my audience? Think about that before you go up to play. Get that you know, sort of in your mindset so it becomes a subconscious thing. And then while you're playing, like I said, don't spend you know, minutes and minutes on it, but just once in a while think about it. Okay, what is happening out there in my audience? How are they relating to me? How are they relating to the instruments? What sort of feedback are they giving me? Because they are. It's important to pick up on that. But you have to be aware of these things. I think a lot of people, not just in sound work, but you know, just playing in bands, and that a lot of people are so focused on just playing the music, so focused on their instruments, they forget the most important thing, the people out there. Again, even here, me trying to relate through the camera, through the video, through a phone, an iPad, a computer, however people are watching this. I'm consciously trying to think about that. Now the feedback loop is a little different because I go to YouTube and there's comments. So the feedback is afterwards on something like a video. And people will write their comments. I liked your video. I didn't like your video. I like this. I agree with that. I do this differently. 
So it's a delayed sort of feedback. But I always look at the comments. I want to see them good or bad. I want to know what's that relationship. How did I, making a video, whether talking head video like today or playing my instruments, how did that connect through the electronic medium to the people who saw it? And those people presenting feedback to me. So I think about it in this same manner here, although like I said, it, any sort of feedback or reaction is delayed because nobody is here live. Now if I'm on a Zoom thing, that's different. I can pay attention. I can get that live feedback on Zoom. So that's the same sort of thing. You know, when you're live on Zoom or Facebook or something, and you are, especially Zoom, where you can see the other people, and people might type in the chat, or if you're just on a, like a live Facebook or a live YouTube thing and people can type in the chat, you might not see them, but you can read you know, what the chat is doing as you're going along. There is that feedback. But think about your relationship. And in this case, how am I relating to the camera there? Or sometimes I'll have a camera here or I'll have another camera up there. Now, how am I relating to the cameras? And how am I relating through them to the viewer? Relationships, they're all around us. We have them in our everyday lives with our families, with our friends, with our, our work and coworkers and that. Um, think about your relationships in your sound work. At first, it will be sort of a very conscious thing. You'll be going, oh, what are the people out there? How are they? And you might take a look out there and go, yeah, they look pretty chill or Ooh, they're kind of restless or something. After a while, it becomes more of an automatic thing where you just can sense things. You can just know things of what's happening. You can read the room, as they say. Like comedians, that's their big thing. They can read the room. They can tell what people are going to be hostile and what people are going to be that they can make a joke, a personal joke out of. And others, they're going to say, I'm not going to, that guy looks hostile. I'm not going to, you know, unless they want to heckler and to go for it. But they can read the room. And this is a thing you develop over time as a performer in any medium, whether you're a musician, a dancer, uh, you know, a poet, whatever. It, when you're doing a live performance, you learn to read the room, read the audience. That. So let's just look at a couple of other relationships that are a little more esoteric, I guess you could say. What is our relationship with our instruments to the room we are playing in? Unless you're fortunate enough to have one space where all your gear is set up and the people come to you, you're probably traveling to different venues. And every venue is different. Tall ceiling, short ceiling, carpeting, wood floors, mirrors or windows, concrete walls, wood walls, plaster walls, etc. Long, short rooms, all that. That affects your sound. So how are you relating to the acoustics in the room? Some, some of your instruments will sound really great because they resonate with the room and you go, oh, that's amazing. Others might sound too harsh or too loud in that room. So you go, ooh, I'll avoid these or I'll have to remember to play them very softly. Things like that. So how are you and your instruments relating to the room? That's important. And then the opposite. How does that room relate to you and your instruments? 
what is it giving you back? The reverb. Like here, it's pretty dry. And that's by design. I, I want it to be dry in here for recording. Any sort of reverb you actually hear is the gongs vibrating in sympathy when I clapped. Otherwise, this is a very dry room. It's controlled, and that's what I want. But I get into a lot of yoga studios that are very brash, you know, almost like playing in a school gymnasium. If you've ever done that, you know how the sound just kind of goes and it's bouncing around everywhere and that. I play in studios like that. I play in all types of studios. So how are you and your sounds relating to the studio and how is the studio or venue relating back to you and your sounds? So think about these things consciously beforehand, afterwards too. Kind of do a little review over your session, maybe when you're packing up or when you're driving home or something. Is think about, yeah, how was that? How was the the audience? What did I feel from them? How was the room? What did I feel from that? How were my instruments today? How was my relationship with them? How are my emotions? That can really affect your relation to everything, you know. Was I feeling a bit ill? Was I really happy? Was I sad? Was I angry? Did I just have a fight with my spouse before I came to the gig? You know, all that sort of stuff. Do a check. How did everything affect everything else? Okay? I'm sure I could come up with more relationships that we deal with, but I'll leave that up to you. Look at what you do. Look at how you do it. And look at the relationships in the chain of relationships. Relationships with the venue owners. <laughs> now that's an important one too. Did they like what I did? Are they going to want to have me back? Didn't they like what I did? And I, I, they probably won't want me back. That sort of thing. You know, it's, it, so everything in the universe is a relationship on one level or another to something. I can even pick up a mallet. You know, what's my relationship to this mallet? How am I feeling about this mallet, holding it? How am I feeling playing? What's my relationship from me to the mallet to the instrument? For me, to the mallet, to the instrument, to the people, to the room. So we can look at all types of levels of relationships, but I'm not going to bore you with that for an hour or so. But I want you to take that away and look at your own situation. What are my relationships? Be aware of them. It will make you a better player, it will make you better at connecting with everything. And it will make you better at connecting not just with the people out there, but with your instruments, with the room you're playing in. And I think that's just can't be emphasized too much. Okay, so thanks for watching. Go take a few minutes and review your own situation as related to some of these ideas, okay? And we'll see you next time. Thanks.